I'm going to show you how I make my pizza. This is a classic kind of Neapolitan style pizza crust and uh, we're going to start today making the dough. I'm going to let it sit for a couple days and we're going to come back and make some pizzas. Okay, we're going to feed the poolish equal parts flour and water in terms of weights. So we're going to put two thirds cup of bread flour. Nice, kind of a thick batter. Let's see, it's getting there. All right. We're going to cover that, put it in the warm place. We're going to let that double in size, and they'll be ready to use it. So here we are, a couple hours later, and you can see that the. Uh, Poolish has doubled in size, it's almost up to the top of the jar. So we're going to have to pour that into a bowl. Alright, so now we're going to combine all the ingredients here. So we're starting out with two different kinds of flours. We have uh, bread flour, King Arthur bread flour. And we're also using Caputo's double zero flour, which is a much finer grain uh, flour, almost like a talcum powder. So we're gonna use 50% of each. We combine that into our, our bowl. And everything we're doing, uh, we're gonna use our scale and everything's measured in Baker's percentages. So we're going with uh, like a 65% hydration means 65% of water. So if, if flour is 100%, uh, water will be 65% and so forth. So um, we have our flour combined. Now the really important part here is to remove 25% of the flour uh, into a bowl separately. Uh, we're gonna add this later on as we mix it. So we're gonna start off with 75% of the flour in the bowl. So we're gonna add some yeast, a little bit of yeast to give it a little bit of a pop. So all we're, all we're leaving here is about a quarter teaspoon uh, of, of yeast in this uh, instant uh, yeast, actually uh, another thing we're going to add for indoor pizza, uh, when we're, we're cooking only on 550 degrees, we're going to use some diastatic malt. Uh, that's going to help with the uh, browning. So we're going to add a little bit of that. We're going to add some salt, kosher salt. And then we're going to add our poolish into here as well. Now, if you're not going to use a poolish, I would double the yeast and you probably should come out okay. You've got a lot more flavor coming with this poolish. It's like a sourdough flavor that's coming. And then we're going to add our water. Okay, that's basically it. It's flour and water, uh, instant yeast, salt, um, diastatic malt, and a little bit of, uh, of our poolish. And then, last but not least, we're going to put a little bit of um, olive oil in there to get a little bit of a crisp. Everything you see here can be bought on the web. You can get the uh, flour from either eBay or Amazon. You get the diastatic malt uh, online as well. Uh, and so we're going to combine all this now. So we're going to start using a, a KitchenAid mixer and we're going to start with uh, two minutes with the paddle and that's going to combine all the ingredients. Okay, our two minutes is up. And you can kind of see that we have a very thick batter here. Not really a dough yet. And that's exactly what we want. Just going to kind of scrape that together here. Now this is an important step. We're going to let this sit for 20 minutes. This is called autolyze. Uh, so we're going to let the dough go through this process. Um, all of these processes, by the way, I got from uh, Verisano's process. And if you just Google Verisano's pizza recipe, you can uh, read all about the science behind all this. Uh, but again, very important step, 20 minutes. We'll let that sit and then we'll come back and mix some more. Now the thing about the poolish or the starter is it's something that you just kind of keep going and, and growing uh, all the time. So when you're done, you're going to reserve about a cup and a half. Now I always reserve two just in case something were to happen. I break a jar, which I've done before, and it's nice to have a spare. Just keep up to two weeks in the fridge without you having to feed it. Um, 
But if you make pizza every week, then it gets fed pretty regularly. That's all you need to do. All right, it's been 20 minutes. So now we're gonna do what's called a wet knead. So for five minutes, we put the hook on. We're gonna go ahead and put that on low and let it run for five minutes and we're gonna put a wet knead on the go. Okay, now we're gonna turn off the mixer one more. We're gonna incorporate the dry that we had pulled out from before. Take a little at a time. We'll push that down so it incorporates. And once that kind of blends in, I right, add right, a little more. So we'll do this for three minutes. done and notice when you pull it up here the dough kind of can can break right through the uh, or the hook and break right through the dough that's when you know you got the right consistency in terms of hydration so what we're going to do now is we're going to then let this rest again for 20 more minutes While we're waiting for the dough to rest, uh, we're going to prepare three uh, plastic uh, bowls here and we're going to store the dough and we, after we ball it up, we're going to store it in these plastic containers uh, in the refrigerator for uh, what's called a cold rise. So for three days I'm going to put it in the fridge and we're going to let the flavors kind of come together um, and then after on the third day before we use it we'll pull it out of the refrigerator and we'll kind of let it come up to temperature for about three hours and then the uh, yeast will kick in, um, the rising qualities of these will kick in and the dough will start to rise. Um, so that's what we'll do. So we got a little bit of olive oil in here, just a little, uh, little bit of olive oil. It doesn't stick, so we're gonna rub that in. The recipe you have today, uh, we'll make three 12 ounce pieces. So we have three containers ready to go. And then once we uh, ball the dough, we'll place them in there. All right, it's been 20 minutes, so now we're going to um, make the dough balls. So we're gonna flour our surface. A little flour in the dough. Just we'll dump this out on the counter. See that it's still a very wet dough. First thing we're going to do is kind of knead it around a little bit. Put it together. Okay, so we're going to measure these out in 12 ounce um, portions. It's okay to keep adding a little more too to get your 12 ounces. And they will come together. That one is close. A little bit more, so we'll those up. Okay. Now the secret here is lots of flour. Kind of knead to the bottom. And what you're doing is you're going to push up to your hand, kind of form a ball and tuck it in to the bottom and then seal it. Get a nice tight ball. And our first one. Those. 
we're going to let them rest for one more rest of 10 minutes. Then we're going to place those in the refrigerator for three days, and then we'll come back and make some pizzas. Here we are a couple days later, and you can see how the dough has settled in the containers. So we're going to let those sit out for a couple hours and uh, rise a little bit, then we'll use them. All right, we're going to make some pizzas tonight. It's a couple days later after making the dough. And uh, great ingredients make great pizza. And so here's what I use. I like the six-in-one all-purpose ground tomatoes. Uh, buy excellent olive oil. We have Romano cheese, Parmesan cheese, oregano that I actually buy. It's still on the stems here, and I pull the, the leaves off so that's nice and fresh tasting. And, of course, fresh mozzarella. And uh, we'll show you how to make the sauce and then when the dough is ready we'll be making some pizzas. The sauce is pretty basic. I'm going to pour our 601 tomatoes in and we've got um, a quarter teaspoon sugar, a half teaspoon of coleslaw salt, a uh, half teaspoon of oregano, about eighth of a teaspoon of red pepper flake. We'll put that in there. We'll add a teaspoon of olive oil. Basically, that's it. Mix that up. And there's our sauce. There's a couple other things you're going to need. A good pizza peel. I like one with a nice thin edge so you can easily get the pizza in and out. Uh, this is some flour just to use for uh, dusting uh, the dough and the workbench and the pizza peel. Uh, this is a mixture of semolina, 50-50 semolina, 50% and 50% flour. I'm going to put that on there and a little bit of granular peel will do it. So that's going to let the dough slide right off that uh, peel easily into the oven. All right, it's been a couple hours. The dough is finally ready. We're going to a generous amount of flour in there. Put this over. The important thing is now, don't touch this. It's going to fall out by itself. Sometimes it takes 10 or 15 seconds. Sometimes it can take a minute. But we're going to let it sit there and let it fall to the bottom. All right, it has fallen out of the container. So, it out again. Lots of flour. I'm kick it around so it doesn't stick. I'll flip it over one time here. This is very delicate dough, so you're not going to be tossing it up into the air. Um, I'm going to form kind of a little bit of a crust around it, so I'm going to push a little dough out to the edge like that. And I'm just going to flip it over a couple times and kind of pull it. If you feel it getting sticky, just put some more flour on it. And this is going to go very quickly because, again, it's very very wet dough, very easy to handle. It's ready to go. Just by flipping it, you're also stretching it, so. I'll round it out a little bit, shake it, um, and there we go. Press a lot of flour off. sauce on first. Not a ton of sauce. The dough is the star here, so we're going to be letting it, its flavors kind of come through. A little more. There Start with a little fresh pepper. Some oregano. And we're going to put that on. A little Pockets around there, doesn't have to spread evenly. Romano cheese. A little fresh garlic. And tonight we'll put some pepperoni. I see I'm making pizza at home. You can put anything you want on it and 
set it up in sections for different people who like different things. So tonight we have pepperoni. And some mushrooms. A couple of slices of mushrooms over here. So we'll just put that over here. Got some green pepper. Put that on half. Right, and then we put our fresh mozzarella and really just gonna tear off little pieces of this. Put it around the pie. There we go. I'm gonna take a little olive oil. I like to drizzle some of that on that cheese. Well, Alright, we're going to put this in the oven, so shake it a little bit so it doesn't stick, and we go in the oven. Okay, the pizza's cooking on a steel, not a stone, a baking steel, and you can see that it's getting nice poopy crust right now. Alright, there it is out of the oven. This was cooked on convection, so keep the air moving in the oven, which gives it a little more browning. Now we have to finish it. We're gonna put some Parmesan cheese. Top it with some fresh olive oil. So we've got cooked olive oil, and we've got fresh olive oil in there. There it is. And you can see we've got a nice uh, browning on the bottom. A lot of structure right here inside the crust. It's a great piece of pizza.